Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> and welcome to our kickoff event for the National Folk Festival in Salisbury, Maryland. First of all, I want to thank all you lovely folks for being here tonight. I want to thank our wonderful and gracious host, Salisbury University, and Dr. Janet Dudley Eschbach. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Now, I understand that uh, uh, Salisbury University's um, beloved 18-year president is uh, under the weather this evening and not with us, um, and I'm in that club, too. So if I don't shake your hand tonight, it's not because I don't like you and appreciate you. It's just that I got a wonderful gift from my little girls, um, and I think it might be the flu. <clears throat> so tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat. You'll get to taste one of the many genres of music and, and arts that are coming to Salisbury September 7th through 9th, 2018. I want to remind you that what we have coming is three free days of high quality, incredible music, performing arts and visual arts, seven stages of music and dance by over 350 artists. Are you excited about that? I want to add to that that this is an event that brings direct spending of 15 to 30 million dollars into our downtown. We're talking about music, we're talking about crafts, we're talking about art, we're talking about dance, we're talking about food, drink, and more. If you've been to the National Folk Festival, and I know there are some folks in the room who have, I, I look over at my friend Joe Gast, I know there's some of you who have, you know that one of the great attractions of the Folk Festival is the Dance Pavilion. You're going to get to see devoted music and entertainment for dancing to get you out on the dance floor and a part of the celebration and the atmosphere. We've got a family area with activities for kids and families. And let's remember, though, this is a family-friendly event throughout, but we've got an area focused on family-friendly uh, activities. We're also celebrating not just Salisbury, but celebrating the entire state of Maryland. So we have a Maryland Traditions Folk Life Area. Now, Maryland has historically had a folk life festival in Baltimore. That festival will be folded into the National Folk Festival in Salisbury, and all of those traditions that have been celebrated over the years in Baltimore will now have a home in Salisbury, Maryland. In addition to that, we're going to celebrate the entire Chesapeake region and the Delmarva region. A festival marketplace will feature crafts and arts exclusively sourced from the Delmarva area. We're going to have great local, regional, and ethnic cuisine. And ultimately, this is a community event. And so tonight is our call to action. Tonight, we need your support to exceed expectations and achieve remarkable success on the national stage. So now, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our host, a friend of the National Folk Festival, a friend of Salisbury, Maryland, and one of our many cheerleaders, Dr. Karen Olmsted. Thank you, Mayor Day. Well, hello, yes, it's genuinely my, I'm a little shorter, I guess, it's my genuine pleasure to welcome you all here today um, on behalf of the university. My name is Karen Olmsted, and I serve as the interim provost and senior vice president for academic affairs. And um, I'm, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Dr. Janet, who, as Jake said, is under the weather today. But I know she's a, a very proud um, supporter of the National Folk Festival. So I'm happy to welcome you all, all here today. Um, as many of you know, maybe many of you were here on Friday, we had the real delight of hosting both of our sitting U.S. Senators here in conjunction with the Greater Salisbury Committee on Friday. That was just terrific. And then a testament to how lively the city of Salisbury is and, the, and, and our campus. Here we are hosting the kickoff for the National Folk Festival just a few days later. So this is really a wonderful week for us. Salisbury is certainly a city on the rise, and there's no stopping our ascent. Salisbury University is a proud supporter of this festival because, as the mayor said, it brings our community together, 
brings vitality to our economy, and then in our own interest, it also brings a lot of prospective new students to our regional university. So we're very excited to meet those folks and their families. This is more than a three-day arts festival. This is a chance for us to shine on the national, the national spotlight. And we enthusiastically support the festival at the university. We certainly have a lot of resources we can bring in support of it. And I hope that all of you do the same. Tonight you'll get a little taste of what's to come, as the mayor said, and um, I can't wait to see some of this. Um, I want to thank the leadership of the city of Sal Salisbury, certainly, certainly the mayor and his wonderful team, and also Laura Botnelli, who's the executive director of the War Museum, for um, being instrumental in bringing the, um, several of those folks, bringing the National Folk Festival to our fair city. And also I'd like to thank um, Jan and Jim Perdue. Jim, hi. Jan. Uh, they are serving as honorary chairs of the National Folk Festival with uh, Maryland's Governor Larry Hogan and his wife, First Lady Yumi Hogan. So thank you so much for all your time and talent. Uh, I think that having the National Folk Festival come to Salisbury is a living, breathing testament of the upward trajectory on which we, in which we find ourselves. This is a city that is safer than it was a few years ago with burgeoning industries, a population that's getting younger and younger, a bustling downtown, not to mention the distinguished university sitting right in the edge of it. So those are all clear signs of our vitality and future potential. Salisbury, Maryland is really ready for the national stage, but it will take all of us working together to show that on the very large platform that is the National Folk Festival. So let's give all of our time, let's all give our time, our talents and treasure to this ambitious undertaking. Again, welcome, and let's remind everyone on that Salisbury is where it's happening. Thank you. Wow, Karen, thank you so much. Um, as Karen mentioned, uh, we have uh, a team of co-chairs for this festival um, that are really just incredible people, and, and you know uh, two of them in the room, and I'll introduce them shortly. Um, but I'd also like to take a moment just to say thank you to our governor, Larry Hogan, and First Lady Yumi Hogan uh, for being willing to uh, you know, serve as ambassadors for the state of Maryland to help welcome people to uh, Salisbury and the Eastern Shore, and to, to be supporters of the arts and our traditions, uh, not only on the Eastern Shore in the Chesapeake region, but, uh, but across uh, America. And so without further ado, uh, we have a special message from Governor Hogan, who is uh, in Annapolis right now, uh, dealing with a couple of bills at the uh, legislature. Um, <clears throat> Uh, some of which we're going to testify on. We're some of my city council friends. Some we're testifying on tomorrow. Um, so with that, we've got a video message from Governor Hogan. Good evening. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person tonight, but I want to share with you how excited I am for the state of Maryland and for Salisbury to host the National Folk Festival. Having an event of this stature and prominence in Maryland is a great honor, bringing national media attention impressive economic benefits, and a boost for future community endeavors. This is why I was proud to accept the position of honorary co-chair, along with my wife Yumi and Jim and Jan Perdue. This large-scale, three-day celebration of America's traditions and cultures will set the stage, or six of them, to showcase the great state of Maryland. Enjoy this night, and I look forward to seeing you all in September at the National Folk Festival. So one of the things that I would like to uh, like to remind everyone of is that this is a curated national festival. So this is not um, this is not an, an opportunity uh, for us to uh, just celebrate Salisbury, but it's also an opportunity for America to celebrate the very best of some uh, traditional crafts um, that are uh, very very exciting. And so this is a curated festival that has had 77 years of tradition, and um, it is now my honor to invite forward the executive director of our partner, the National Council for the Traditional Arts, Julia Olin, to, to help introduce you to the National Folk Festival. Julia. Oh, it's wonderful to see all of you here tonight. What a, what a great crowd. Uh, I know that um, 
there's been a lot of a uh, lot of talk about the National Folk Festival, but I know that some of you are still wondering exactly what is it. So we brought along a little a uh, little uh, video that um, gives you a little overview, a little history of the festival, and uh, some of uh, the results of, uh, that other cities have had in in their experiences in hosting the festival. Um, it is a, a little video. Uh, the NCTA received a uh, Lifetime Achievement Award from another organization a few years ago, and it was it's nice to be alive to uh, to receive Lifetime Achievement Awards. Uh, so uh, that's what this is. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it answers a few of your questions. <laughs> With the blessings of the Creator, we can do this together. And with events like this, I am so proud and so honored to be here. Oh, Mitakia Oyasi, we are all related. Oh. Perhaps the easiest way to describe the National Council for the Traditional Arts, or NCTA, is to say they're in the miracle business. They are to folk festivals what Johnny Appleseed was to apple trees. Wherever the nonprofit arts organization goes, folk music, traditional culture, and pride in America's ethnic heritage take root and grow. After visits by the NCTA's National Folk Festival, thriving local festivals sprang up in Bangor, Maine, Richmond, Virginia, Lowell, Massachusetts, Dayton, Ohio, and other places. And each town will tell you it was a miracle. In Bangor, the 2004 National Folk Festival drew 145,000 people to a town of 34,000. A miracle? In 2009, 120,000 attended in Butte, population 33,000. The National changes the cities it visits forever. The Bangor waterfront was once a place of decay and embarrassment. It is now a tourist attraction with a performance center that draws thousands to its summer concert series. Butte used to regard its ruined mines as a blight, but when the National used an old mining head frame as the backdrop for its main stage, it became a source of great pride, the landscape that makes Butte, Butte. If ever a single event has the capacity to bring a city alive, this is it, says Montana Governor Brian Schweitzer. Michael Doucet of Beausoleil told Inside Arts magazine, you look out and see whole families together, young kids and old folks, all enjoying the same things. And that's hard to see most places today. Sounds miraculous, but not to the national. In the still segregated America of 1936, a Kiowa Indian girl named Leota Ware performed at the festival. When she told her grandmother what she'd seen, blacks, whites, Latinos, Native Americans sharing their music, eating together, talking together, her grandmother said, heaven will be like that. Their plan is wondrously simple. The National Folk Festival comes to a town for a three-year residency, working closely with local government and cultural groups. The goal is a successful event, of course, but also to create an ongoing local festival in its wake. It is remarkable how many ways this turns potentially dangerous energy into powerful synergy. Because the festivals are in urban areas with city government as partners, they have access to police, fire, health, zoning, things that can often derail cultural events. Because the goal is to create a local festival, the parochial power struggles that often destroy these partnerships become fuel for the common fire. We're not getting a cookie-cutter event, says George Everett, director of Main Street Uptown Butte, a festival partner. The NCTA really pays attention to local culture, local communities, and yet they have a great, well-honed program they're very experienced with. They do a great job of compensating where there's weaknesses, but always recognizing where our strengths are. NCTA director Julia Olin says, because we're bringing the music to where people live and work, it creates a very different sense of ownership. It's not, we own this, but you can come visit. It's, we're going to put this where you live, and it's going to be yours. The National Folk Festival was founded in 1934 by Sarah Gertrude Knott, a formidable, intelligent, passionate woman. And it starts with her, the idea that miracles are just part of the job. In 1939, the Daughters of the American Revolution refused to allow African-American contralto Marian Anderson to sing at their whites-only Constitution Hall. But from 1938 to 1942, the National was there, hosting blues legend W.C. Handy, black activist playwright Zora Neale Hurston, and a host of non-white performers. 
In the 1950s, rumors swirled that the National might be a communist front. Not burst unannounced into the office of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, something no mere president would dare to do, and upbraided him for allowing the Americanism of her or her festival to be challenged. He sheepishly told her he would stop the rumors, and he did. And yet throughout the McCarthy era, the National regularly hired blacklisted folk singer Pete Seeger. Miracles. But by the 1960s, the National seemed tired, out of step. In 1971, the National Park Service assigned its forward-thinking director of folk programming, Andy Wallace, to salvage the National's troubled residency at Wolf Trap. He brilliantly revitalized it, mixing purely traditional acts with professional folk stars and ensuring that the partnership with the National Park Service became ongoing. In 1976, the NCTA was formed as the National's umbrella organization and Joe Wilson became its director. He combined the folkloric savvy of a Ralph Rinsler with the showmanship of a P.T. Barnum. Under his watch, the festival was reverently traditional and more fun than a Bourbon Street Saturday night. Some of today's biggest folk stars thank the National for helping launch their careers, including Alison Krauss, Michael Flatley, Shamika Copeland, Steve Riley, Ricky Skaggs, and Sullis. The NCTA also produces scores of musical tours, both national and global, operates the Blue Ridge Music Center, helps with cultural programming for national parks, the Library of Congress, and the National Endowment for the Arts, produces TV programs, radio shows, films, and CDs, all in today's work. And what's the payoff for them? Julia Olin remembered cowboy poet Paul Zarsky watching the National in Richmond a few years ago. This has been so good for me, he told her. I'm recovering my faith. Look at us all here, appreciating each other, getting along. This is who we are. This is who we really are as a people. Julia said, I know that sounds corny, sounds simple, but it's gratifying. Simple? <laughs> only to the NCTA. To the rest of us, it sounds like a miracle. So one of the things that this festival represents is an introduction to our community of different genres of, of arts. Uh, genres that you may not be familiar with or may not have had significant experience with. Our second co-chairs are right here in flesh and blood, Jim and Jan Perdue. I truly cannot think of two better ambassadors for the Eastern Shore than Jim and Jan. And we are so grateful to have you here. And Jan, am, am I right? Jan, I, I understand that uh, you've been admiring Caroline's scarf. We've got one for you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, happy. Never mind. Boy, I was afraid he was going to call me, and Sarah, you did a great job. She played on my soccer team many, many years ago, so uh, nervous. Norvis, thank you so much, you and your group. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'll tell you, the, uh, that performance you just saw was one of the reasons why Jan and I support the uh, National Folk Festival coming to Salisbury and why we are honored, along with the governor to, uh, and his wife, to uh, be honorary co-chairs uh, co for the event. Uh, you know, that feeling you heard was... Uh, 
really the reason why um, th there's so much energy around this event. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of the energy uh, many years ago when I was a teenager uh, and the National Indoor Tennis Championship came to Salisbury and, uh, and put Salisbury on the map, you know, and that, that took a leader, in that case Bill Reardon, to do that and, and we have a great leader in Jake and his team that are doing the same thing. So great job, Jake. And, uh, And now your support of this is, is really, really important. And uh, it's going to ensure that hundreds of thousands of, of people who mark their calendars every year uh, for this event is going to bring excitement and support for the festival. And, uh, and it's going to really ensure that uh, for those three days in September, which the temperature will probably be like it is today, uh, which is sort of, uh, you know, uh, coincidental uh, uh, when it arrives here in Salisbury uh, in September. Um, by joining us, uh, Jan and I, and uh, supporting the festival, you're going to be the reason why your family, your grandchildren, your, your grandchildren's children, uh, will experience the nation's finest performers and artists year after year, every year, right here in Salisbury. And I assume one of the cuisines will be... Uh, of course. Chicken, uh, okay, good, good, good. That's, that's, that's really important, you know, so... Uh, so what are you waiting for? Join us, and, and thank you for coming out tonight, and thank you so much, uh, uh, Norvis and the, the uh, Sweet Heaven Kings. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Wow. Well, Jim and Jan, thank you. Sweet Heaven Kings, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. So when I talk to leaders of, of cities uh, where this festival has been before, remember, this is the 78th year of this festival. When I talk to leaders of Greensboro and Richmond and uh, Butte, Montana and Bangor, Maine, one of the things that they say is that this was a moment of change for their communities. They were communities on the rise. They were proud of where they were. They were proud of what they'd accomplished to that point. But they never could have imagined what those few years would plant in them and what it would blossom into. So when we look at the transitional moment that we have before us, we want to talk about opportunities that everybody can be engaged in. Because at the end of the day, this is not about one person. This is not about um, even a, a small group of people. This is about our entire community. So I'm going to ask Julia and Caroline, if you wouldn't mind coming up, to help me talk a little bit about um, ways that people can be involved. Um, I'm I'm keenly interested in the community impact that this will have. Of course, I'm interested in the economic impact that this will have throughout our community. But let's talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, ways that people can be involved in the National Folk Festival. Great. Well, uh, good evening. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am just blown away by the Sweet Heaven Kings. They just lift the spirits. And I thank you so much for that. That was incredible. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, so, this is about community. It's about community building. It's about a community coming together, supporting each other, lifting each other up, just like that music lifted us up. And there are several ways that you can get involved. Uh, the first, obviously, through sponsorship, monetary donations. We have several sponsors over here, which we, we uh, uh, are so, so amazed of the support that we've gotten, and we, we're going to uh, share a little bit about them in a bit. Um, so there's monetary ways. There's in-kind contributions. Uh, I, I was speaking to the owner of Dove Point, and he said, I have a billboard outside my, uh, my place. I'll, I'll promote the folk festival that way. Or uh, it's a, a media company saying, well, I have some ad time. Or it's someone saying, you know, I happen to have 50 golf carts you can use, which we could really use, by the way. <laughs> um, it's, it's finding those ways to partner. When I was at the business uh, information meeting, uh, Mary Norton, who has a dance studio down, uh, uh, downtown, thank you, Mary, over there. Hi. She's on our, our musical programming committee as well. She's like, you know what? I have a dance studio downtown. It's not going to be used during the weekend. The bands can use it for rehearsal space, for a gathering space. It's finding ways that we can support each other. So it's not just money, although we do need money to support this festival. Um, it's about coming together and helping each other. And then that also leads to another fantastic opportunity, and that's volunteering. 
We are partnering with the United Ways of Lower, Lower Eastern Shores Online Volunteer Center, which is incredible. Kath, Kathleen Mame and, and, and Pam Gregory have been just such amazing assets and have really raised the bar for what we thought we could do with our volunteers. We're going to need about 800 plus, so I'm signing you all up now. Um, but that's another great way. If you're a company that has a social, uh, a pro-social group, you know, that wants to volunteer a few hours or three days, or if you're a social organization or a school or, or, or just a family that says, you know what, we want to put in some time. We want you to be a part of this. Just like when the Sweet Heaven Kings were coming down into the crowd, this isn't just a one-way street type of festival. This isn't where you just stand there and you watch. This is where you participate. And this is where you have the chance to come together and lift us up together. This is an amazing opportunity, and I'm so excited, especially to see so many faces here. I know that we're going to succeed in this because of you and because of the amount of people in here and because of the, the, the types of people in here, which are our leaders or which are our doers, which are the people that say, I'm not just going to wait around. I'm going to do something about it. And I'm just so proud to be involved with this. And if you have any questions, please come speak to me or a committee member, uh, contact the mayor's office or go to nationalfolkfestival.com. Um, I'm going to step away from the mic since I could talk about this all night. But I thank you so much and um, thank you again. And, and uh, I think I introduced Julia Olin before. Okay, all right. Julia Olin. Yeah, all right. Good. <laughs> again. I, I just want to add, uh, Caroline certainly covered our, our needs. Our needs are great, but uh, together we're building something not just for three years. We are building something that's going to continue here. That's, I think, a really important aspect of this entire endeavor. When the national moves on, a new festival will take its place, and all the elements, the systems, the model, the infrastructure, the volunteers, everything will be in place. Uh, for example, Lowell, Massachusetts, which hosted this festival uh, in 1987, 88, and 89, is entering its 32nd year of producing the Lowell Folk Festival. Now, amazingly, 175 people show up, not all at one time, over the weekend. What? What did I say? Oh, no, more than that. 175,000 people. <laughs> so, and, and the, the changes that I have witnessed in Lowell over these many decades are amazing. Truly amazing, and they take all sorts of forms. They might be contribute to revitalization of downtown uh, and new businesses and new cultural organizations and activities, but also, most importantly, it's the, com the, the psychological shift that takes place when a community comes together and comes together in new and, and special ways and does something together, and it's, it just changes how you think about yourself. And Salisbury has already accomplished so much, but it is poised. It is really poised, and we brought the National Folk Festival here because we believe that can help you raise your community uh, and the Delmarva Peninsula, and in fact, it'll be a jewel for the state of Maryland to a new level. And just so you don't get the impression this is a small team effort, uh, there are many committees that have been working already programming music. We announced earlier this week the first eight performers line, lined up for the festival. Um, you can find out more information about them at nationalfolkfestival.com. The marketing committee has been hard at work, and our fundraising committee has been hard at work. And I'd like to ask some of the members of the fundraising committee to come up, including the chair, Joe Gass, from Avery Hall. I'd like to ask Kathleen Momay, Mike Dunn, and Marty Neat to come up as well. Let's hear it for these fine people.
Thank you. Thank you. I've got a very short story I want to tell you, okay? Um, three or four years ago, my daughter, who lives in Greensboro, North Carolina, told me about this folk festival. And I'm like, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I've never heard of this before. She goes, you got to come down. you got to watch it. So uh, 2016, we went down. Phenomenal. Uh, 2017, we went down. And... Uh, had a great time. It's a family atmosphere. You, you see the talent that you see uh, on every stage. So I made a call to my daughter uh, this past year and said, uh, guess what, Jenna? Um, we're going to host the National Folk Festival. No way. I said, you're coming home. <laughs> so I got my daughter to come back home uh, for, for this uh, September. So it's a great story. And one other thing, I get a call from Jake Day and said, I need a fundraising chairman. I couldn't turn him down. So, thanks, Jake. <laughs> Hi. Uh, you know, it really is a shame of that uh, video of the uh, governor saying all those nice things about me. Uh, couldn't. Uh, You know, when I was first approached about joining the fundraising committee, I really had to think about it. Make no mistake, I'm very impressed with a lot of what I see happening in Salisbury these days. But I wasn't so sure that this event wasn't pushing the envelope a bit too far. But as I thought, I also remembered. I remembered when Bill Reardon brought internationally known tennis stars like Jimmy Connors and Amelia Nastasi to Salisbury. I remember how years ago I had a small part in the capital campaign as Frank Morris, Dick Hansen, Bob Cook, and many other Salisbury leaders were saving our local YMCA from foreclosure. At the end of that successful campaign, and look at what we have now, Frank Morris was handing out certificates. One read, we cannot have a better life without improving our community. Our particular duty is to do those things that we are capable of doing. And I also thought about that recently as I was working out at the treadmill at the same Y. I'm listening to music, Bruce Springsteen incidentally, and watching the video. Life just doesn't get much better than that. But then another video comes on the treadmill. It's Whitney Houston's rendition of One Moment in Time. I'm drawn back to hearing that song as Cal Ripken circled the stadium at Camden Yards in September 1996, and baseball celebrated his feat of surpassing Lou Gehrig's record of 2,130 consecutive games. To quote from those lyrics, I want one moment in time when I'm more than I thought I could be, when all of my dreams are a heartbeat away, and the answer is all up to me. But as my wife Marilyn also often reminds me, this isn't about me, it's about us. That is to say, all of us. Friends, we need your help. This project can be one moment in time for Salisbury. It can be more than many think Salisbury could be. 75 or 100,000 people come into Salisbury to see and celebrate our community. I think I know what Frank Morris, Dick Hazel, Frank Perdue, Avery Hall, Dave Rogers, Bill Reardon, all those who came before us would say. I think they would say, we cannot have a better life without improving our community. Our particular duty is to do those things that we are capable of doing. Everyone in this room tonight is a leader. That's why you're here. Let's all be part of something really great. Thank you. Good evening. The main reason I said that I would be part of the fundraising committee is so that I could finally say that I was able to stand on a stage with Marty Me. So. <laughs> Goal check. So raise your hand if you're aware of what's going on in the search for Amazon and finding Amazon a new home in the United States of America. This is our Amazon moment. <laughs> this is the city of Salisbury's opportunity to showcase itself to the Mid-Atlantic and to potentially to the entire United States of America. So our Amazon moment is here, our opportunity to show the world what we all know, which is this is one 
heck of a place to call home is here. So how are we going to do this? Us, us uh, members of the um, fundraising committee have come up with an idea. And it's called the Legacy Society. And we're asking you to be the initial members of the Legacy Society. Where's the picture of the amphitheater? Right standing over there. On that amphitheater space is going to be built a permanent legacy wall. You have one opportunity to get your name on that legacy wall. And what we're asking for you is to be a member of the Legacy Society. The Legacy Society will be made up of 300 community and business leaders who are committed to community building and this festival effort. The Legacy Society members may join by gifting. We're not donating money here, we're gifting. Gifting the festival $1,000 or more. We are looking for 300 members of the Legacy Society. So if you own a business, your business can be a member of the Legacy Society. And then you can also make a donation as an individual to the Legacy Society. Those who do, thank you. This is a rendition of what the Legacy Society wall will look like at the amphitheater. It will be permanent. And there will be one time and one time only to get your name on this permanent wall to be part of this heavy lift that we've all been talking about. So we are hoping that you will consider the opportunity to gift and be part of one of those 300 people. My wife Karen and I are part of that Legacy Society, we're proud to say. Today I picked up the phone and called my two of my siblings and we're gonna, they're going to join the Legacy Society in honor of our late mother. So you can do the same thing. How do you do all of that? How do you become a member of the Legacy Society? Kathleen Mamey of the United Way will tell you how. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And good evening. Every day at United Way, I am so blessed and honored to see how the financial gifts and the gifts of volunteer time to our community. As we all know here, you're all leaders, we have an incredible, caring, and loving community who takes care of our neighbors in need. Thanks to leaders who come, you've heard many that Marty shared tonight, who've laid many foundations for the success of Salisbury in the Eastern Shore. But now thanks to our incredible Mayor Jake Day. He is, not, he is improving the landscape of our community in so many ways, physically, economically, relationship-wise, and in a dynamic way that I have never seen before. And he has brought to us, yes, hello, let's hear it. And he and his team have provided our community with the opportunity to fit cultural events of a lifetime. And again, it's not just one year, as you've heard. It's for many years. It's for a lifetime. It's for our children, our grandchildren, generations to come. This is, tonight is the beginning of our change to wrap our arms around our community in a different way. For all of you to be a charter member of the Legacy Society that you just heard about. Becoming a corporate sponsor, an in-kind sponsor, a chance to volunteer. Our government cannot do this alone. We need every company represented in this room and many more. Every community leader, every civic group, and even our own family to step up to this plate to make this event the best it can be. And you just saw, wow, this is exciting. I've given up trying to rent out the rooms in my house because all my family wants to come stay from out of town. But we have an opportunity here for United Way as the volunteer center of the Eastern Shore. We have stepped up to the plate to offer our platform to support the volunteer committee and to help, as you heard, provide support for the 800 volunteers that are going to be leaving. My husband and I personally are saying, yes, this is the community we love. We are going to be Legacy Society members. I am going to be going to, for all of you who are in clubs with me, I'm going to be going to all the clubs I'm involved with to ask them. We want their names to be on a brick 
at this amphitheater to say, yes, we were the charter members to be a part of this effort that will last forever. And I ask you all tonight to really look at your company. Is your company involved? Will they be a Legacy Society member? Will they be a sponsor? Will they be an in-kind sponsor? Will you and your families have a brick? At family dinners, talk to your cousin. Will they have a brick? And as Mike mentioned, Mike, on my right, not my left, in honor of or in memory of a loved one, this is an incredible opportunity for all of you here to say, yes, I was a part of the beginning of this amazing cultural event. This is your golden ticket. They are on all the tables. We know, we hope, and you heard before, we hope that many of you will fill them out tonight. Yes, my family's gonna be an individual Legacy Society member. You have opportunities to give credit cards, you have opportunities to write a check, or payments over, uh, I think it's three, four times a year. Yeah, yeah four, four quarterly payments of 250. We also ask you all to look at the clubs you're involved with. See if your club, I know the Elks are involved tonight. We know Lions are here tonight. We know Rotaries are here tonight. Optimus, yeah, did I see Tony Sarbanes? I did. Um, I, I hope I didn't miss anything. Thank you, Mike. We want everyone, this is not a government thing. This is all of us as families and a community to be a part of it. Take this opportunity. There are envelopes out front. If you don't want to turn it in tonight, to talk it over with your family, to take it to your business. Please join us. We need you, and this is a golden ticket. It's my pleasure now. Let's hear it again for May Mayor Jake Day. Well, thank you so much for those kind remarks. Um, Kathleen, I didn't expect that. I feel like I, I don't deserve that. And you're too kind. But we have incredible, incredible people serving already in, and deeply engaged in this festival. Kathleen and Joe and Mike and Marty and Caroline and Julia. The, the team is, is big and powerful and growing. And I want to take a second just to acknowledge and thank a couple of the businesses that are already involved as sponsors of the National Folk Festival. So bear with me for just a second as I, I read these organizations out. Flowers Unlimited, who gave us the beautiful flowers that you see tonight. Lowe's, Home Depot, Purdue Farms, Pohanka of Salisbury, Avery Hall Insurance, Maryland State Arts Council, Mer National Endowment for the Arts, the NCTA, uh, DHCD, the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development, the Donnie Williams Foundation, the City of Salisbury, the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art, Wicomico County Recreation, Parks and Tourism, Ocean City Tourism, Salisbury University and Beacon, the Salisbury University Foundation, the O'Hare Group at Berkshire Hathaway, Devrico, Gillis Gilkerson, Chesapeake Utilities, Sandpiper Energy, Greater Salisbury Committee, Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce, First Shore Federal, 47 ABC, iHeart Media, Pepsi, Peninsula Regional Medical Center, Clear Channel Outdoor, United Way of the Lower Eastern Shore, the Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District, and as of about an hour ago, Comcast and Comcast Spotlight. Let's hear it for them. So, Mike Dunn needs to say one more thing. Um, but let me just say this. This is the first time that this festival has been located in Maryland. And the National Council for the Traditional Arts is actually headquartered in Maryland. And for us to pull this off, competing against cities around the country, was not only a coup for Salisbury, but a coup for this entire state. And it's a proud moment. And that's, I know that's part of why our governor is involved. So, I'm going to hand it over to Mike, and then I've got two last things I'm going to say, and then uh, we'll let you all enjoy the rest of the food and, and beverages. It's hard to believe that we're here in the home of Purdue Farms, and the president and CEO of Purdue Farms, a guy by the name of Randy Day, made a great idea, brought it to me, and I forgot to bring it forward. So, Randy Day has a great spontaneous idea out there for all Why High, Bennett, Parkside, and Mardella graduates. Randy Day of Purdue Farms. A lot of you may not know the name Randy Day, so let me help you. I'm Jake's dad. Oh, 
So, so here's my idea, here's my challenge. How many graduated from Bennett? Jim, careful with that arm. How about Wahai? Okay. Parkside? Mardella? Okay, a little. Right. Oh, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Okay. So we're going to spot Mardella a little bit to help him out. But here's the challenge. Let's have a fundraising competition. High school against high school. Just like the old days. And I, all I want to know is who's going to... I went to Bennett. Who's going to come in second? That's all I need to know. Well, I have to say, go Clippers. <laughs> we'll, we'll work out the details. We'll work out the details. So thank you for being with us tonight. If you had a preconceived notion of what a folk festival was going to sound like, I hope that we confounded your expectations tonight. Let's hear it for the Sweet Heaven Kings. Before you leave, before you leave, if you wouldn't mind filling out your pledge support card and leaving that with us, um, you can leave it at the check-in table outside. We want to build this legacy society. We're getting ready to build. And I know we've got Delmarva veteran builders in the room. We're getting ready to start construction on this amphitheater. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. So, be a part of this festival. Be a part of transforming our community. I'm so grateful for your partnership, for your presence tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make this thing reality. Have a great night. The National Folk Festival is an American treasure. For three days each year, the festival creates a family-friendly space where people can come together and experience the many diverse, rich cultures that comprise the very fabric of our nation. For those three days, the festival is the center of the folk art universe, and we are beyond honored to throw our arms wide and to welcome the National Folk Festival to its new home for the next three years. For nearly 100 years, Purdue Farms has been headquartered in Salisbury. As our company has grown over the decades, we have remained committed to enhancing the community which we are so proud to call home. I am so thrilled to join Governor Mrs. Hogan, Mayor Jake Day, and the NCTA to bring the National Folk Festival to Salisbury. As the festival highlights the folk arts, it also provides us with the opportunity to showcase our city and the beautiful Delmarva Peninsula. Hi, I'm Governor Larry Hogan. And I am First Lady Yumi Hogan. We couldn't be more excited for Maryland to host the National Folk Festival starting next September. For over 80 years, the National Folk Festival has traveled all across the country with three days of free entertainment celebrating folk arts and culture. We are very proud that the city of Southbury on our beautiful Eastern Shore will be their home for the next three years. I'm going for the crafts. Well, I'm going for the chicken. <laughs> I'm going for the music. Honey, I'm going for the art. We'll both go. <laughs>